Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. So happy that you decided to tune in and join us for another great edition today. Today, we are so happy to be joined for the first time by Dr. Mark Peck, who is the dentist and owner of Dental Studio 101 right here in Arizona. Thank you so much for joining us today, Thank Dr. you. Thank Peck. you for having me. Pleasure to have you, and I know you've been practicing dentistry a long time here. I have, 30 years now, so. Wonderful. Yeah. That is, well, I know you have some great information to share with our viewing audience, but before we get started, maybe just share a little bit about who you are, kind of your history, and what well, you do. I, uh, I, I'm a Wyoming boy. I came to uh, Arizona. I went to NAU for uh, undergrad, Marquette University for dental school. Uh, my wife and I moved back to the Phoenix area to start a practice and a family. I've got two uh, boys, now 30 and 31, wow. two lovely grandbabies. Aww. And uh, so family's growing and practice has been awesome here in town. And uh, we're just enjoying life right now. It's, it's been fun. Wonderful. So that's that's a great time. Congratulations on your grandchildren. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know that's every grant's every it parent's pride too. and joy, right? It so is. <laughs> probably have to make sure that they don't eat too much candy whenever oh, they come over there being a dentist. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they have pretty much free reign with with Papa. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure that's the fun of it, right? You get to give them all the candy exactly. and send them home. So, <laughs> well, thank you again so much for taking time away from your practice. Oh, my pleasure. Being here to share with our viewing audience some great information. So for you at home today, we are speaking about health, and our first topic is just general dental health and concerns. Um, practicing for 30-plus years, you've probably seen all different kinds of arrays of, of health issues and concerns as I have, and it, it runs a gamut, and it kind of ebbs and flows in, in what comes into uh, the highlight of health issues. And right now, I think it's a, a back again to uh, dental health and medical health education for children and parents of children um, to, to curb preventative uh, uh, arenas so that, so that that becomes more of a focus again. I think we lost a little bit of focus over the last few years. Um, again, we've got a heightened drug community. We've got a uh, push for these energy drinks that not only health issues physically, but uh, dentally as well. Um, we're seeing kids with massive uh, decays and, and blown out teeth because of the drugs that we're taking. The meth is just bombing things out like cocaine did years ago. And we're also seeing a decrease in the education in, in uh, families that are pushing dental health and medical health. And, and some of that has to do with the economy, I'm sure. Um, but we're also now seeing a big surge in bringing that education back to parents and children and, and organizations supporting you know, events for, for children and, and that again, which we hadn't, I think, in, in so many years. You mentioned energy drinks. That's something I've been hearing about more and more, and some of the health issues related with that. I guess you right. don't even think about the teas, but is it just is it the high sugar content? Well, it's very high sugar content, and it comes right into the mouth as sugar, and then it potentiates itself. And kids are soaking in these, you know, soaking their teeth in these all day long. And we are seeing, you know, gum and teeth issues because of the the sugar content, and we're seeing cavities in kids that wouldn't have had them 10 years ago. We were so excited when fluoride, you know, stopped kids from having cavities, and uh, now we're seeing again, you know, the, the small kids coming in with what used to be what used to look like bottle mouth caries, and they're, they're giving kids energy drinks and that as well. And it's just wow. not a good situation, but easily curbed with education and programs like this, getting you know information out that these are serious issues and do affect people for life. So that's something I've, I'm very fortunate. Soda was never a thing of mine in my family. It just wasn't really a big right. issue. But I know that there's a lot of people out there that drink soda like water or probably right. more than water. And they should be drinking more water and less soda. But right. if there are, if people do have kids or even if they're adults and they're drinking energy drinks or sodas, what would be your suggestion to help prevent oh. the actual decay from that? Definitely curb the use of okay. energy drinks, soda, even orange juices, uh, the juices that are um, prevalent. Um, if you want to give your kids orange juice or apple juice or the healthier drinks, it's important to, to make sure that they're rinsing and brushing okay. and that regularly. Lots of water 
And again, just increasing the, the knowledge around what dietary concerns we have as well. In this country where we have so much obesity and, and even in young children, it's not only just a drinking thing, it's a whole dietary thing that affects you know, health. And, and the decisions that are made as young adults and young children um, potentiate into the, into the adulthood. And, and it's hard to curb once you've reached you know, 18 years old you have these habits, they were your parents, it's what you do. So you really have to emphasize on the, on the children in the community that this is not the way that things should be and it doesn't have to be like this. And when you get into the teenage years, when we have kids that come in with cavities and their parents are standing there, we always say, wouldn't you rather spend money on you know, a motorbike or you know, a vacation with your family than having to spend it here at the dentist? And I would certainly rather have them spend it on their own than, than us having to do invasive surgeries for you know, something that could have been prevented. And you mentioned prevent it being, being preventative with your teeth. And so, I mean, that's what's just general health for your teeth? What, brush twice a day? I brush mean, twice a day. Um, as children, if you're not in an area that's got fluoride in the water, you should have a fluoride supplement. And that you can determine through your physician or through the health association in town. Um, Phoenix, we're lucky to have a, a very ideal uh, fluoride parts per million, um, thanks to some of the inventive dentists that are still practicing here today. Um, there is a, a, a lot of uh, education in, in hydrating and what to hydrate with. So water is the drink of the day, put your kids to bed with water, um, not the milks and juices that, that we did you know, in my parents' generation. When it, you know, they didn't so know any better. They didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah. And seatbelts your kids so they yeah. don't hit the dashboard and break their teeth, whatever. But uh, there are a lot of things preventatively that you can do for kids. And, and the dentist visit twice a year, I think, is recommended after age three or four um, so that we can catch things early. Also, if we can see kids at three and even two years old coming in with their parents, they're not afraid. They're not afraid. And there's really not a whole lot anymore to be afraid at the dentist. And other than that, it's, uh, you know, you get the light shining in your face. But yeah. if the kids grow up with that and at three years old, they're mostly just getting rides in chairs, which is kind of fun. Their parents are there. They have a whole different experience as their life goes on. And that creates a good lifetime habit. I think it and does. I don't know why people have ever been afraid of the dentist. I always loved going to the dentist I from the time it. I was a kid. I loved it. I just, right. I mean, you seem nice and friendly. I've never met a dentist that really well, seems scary to me. People, <laughs> most people are uh, pretty, you know, calm when they come into the dentist. But we do have our anxieties, you know, and it, different things pop up with uh, different people. So as dentists, we've got to be aware that everybody's not like you and I. Yeah. That, you know, I just love going to the dentist. But... It's nice to see when a little kid comes in and just enjoys the, the visit or even you know, through, through the grandparents' age, enjoys coming in because it makes, certainly makes my job a lot easier. Yeah, you don't have office. to hold them down. I know, but, that's how my yeah. brother was. But, yeah. And one thing that I think all of us probably lack on and I know that as much as I try to take care of my teeth, I know a lot of people don't do this, is flossing. How important is flossing? Flossing is very important. It's the area in the teeth where your brush can't get to and stuff just gets stuck in between teeth. Uh, the farther back the teeth, the wider that, that area to floss is, and those are where we find most of the uh, cavities that come between teeth, and it's mostly because patients don't floss. And that seems like the battle of, you know, forever, getting somebody to floss. We can give them little business cards with floss, and we give them, you know, home care floss, we give them whatever we can do, but uh, we've even offered to have them come into the office, we'll floss their teeth once a day, but... I might come and take you up on that. <laughs> Every time I, I get my teeth cleaned and they floss me, I'm like, this is so handy. I wish right. you were there every morning to Just do this to do for this. <laughs> But it is, that's, uh, you can clean your teeth with, you know, eating roughage. What you can't do is clean the interproximal or in between the teeth. And so floss is definitely, in, and a water pick is no substitute, although it's a good adjunct. Um, the, water, the two picks are not the substitute, although they are a good adjunct. Flossing, there's nothing that replaces it. It replaces flossing. Yeah. And that leads to, to gum disease. And that's the thing that I know I've been told and in research I found that just because your teeth are healthy and you may have no cavities and you may have that, gum disease can become a major issue in your teeth. And, and it can. You can lose and teeth because of just gum disease. It's a Can't quiet you? killer, say, so to speak, and it actually can be a killer. But uh, the, the bacteria in the mouth are strep and staph, and there's some normal bacteria that aren't good systemically. Now, when you don't brush your teeth and you get a breakdown of the gum attachment to the tooth, now you have a communication between oral fluids and bacteria into the systemic uh, system. So you've got uh, 
bacteria in the bloodstream that don't belong there that can attack the heart uh, valves, they can attack joints, they can you know, do a myriad of things, but the focus now is on heart disease and the association with the, the bacteria of the mouth and, and also new, new prosthetic joints. Um, we, we use antibiotics for a couple of years after they, they have joints and heart valves and that kind of thing put in, but uh, um, there's a direct correlation between gum disease, which is oral care or oral miscare, gum disease would be, um, and, and some serious issues that can cause life-threatening situations. No, and that's something that, how would people know if they had gum disease? I mean, is it well, something that you feel, that, or? Not until your gums really start to bleed, or if you're bleeding when you're flossing, then there's a problem, but if you're flossing, you're probably not going to bleed. So it's an easy thing to take care of. It's a very inexpensive thing to do. Brushing and flossing, you know, you can get a toothbrush for a couple bucks and floss for a couple bucks that would last you for a year. Um, those little dentifrices, even without uh, toothpaste, can prevent gum disease and, and the, the potentiation of those problems. But people don't usually feel gum disease until they really have a serious problem, loose tooth, uh, bleeding gums, and then it's uh, repairable. I mean, we can do root planing, which we call a deep scaling or cleaning. It's a little more than what you'd like to go through, uh, um, and a little harder and a little more expensive than just normal routine care yeah. when it gets to that point. Um, sensitivity, that's something that, is that a health concern? Is that something some people are just more sensitive? Is, you know, it can be. You don't want to disregard uh, sensitivity because it can be a cavity or gum disease causing this or root canal problems causing sensitivities. But most run-of-the-mill sensitivities, you've got cold sensitivity on your teeth. It may be that you have just sensitive teeth. It may be that you have a little bit of recession and some root surfaces showing that may take some of that cold or hot and bring it to the nerve a little bit quicker. Um, certainly if you have sensitivity that lasts uh, any period of time, I would certainly see your dentist and just have it evaluated so that you know. The, the scary thing is, and what keeps people away, is what if it is a problem? Well, if it is a problem, you need to be here sooner than later is, yeah. is better, right? So. No, absolutely. I know that's the thing that keeps a lot of us away, right. probably. And then sensitivity during bleaching. Pe people, a lot of times during a bleaching process, if you're having your teeth bleached, um, whether it's, you know, Chris Strips or the Colgate mm -hmm. Whitener or the, the professional whitening, um, that can cause some sensitivity in teeth. That's kind of normal. What that does is open up the pores of the enamel to let the peroxides into bleach, and it makes it a little more vulnerable on a lot of people to some sensitivity to cold or even to the product itself. Yeah, because that typically would go away. Th that does that damage your teeth though? Because I know that that's a it big doesn't. Thing. Yeah, there there hasn't been a lot of study on on damaging effects uh, of bleaching techniques. So uh, we don't typically give it to a, a pregnant mother um, because we're not quite sure what happens. You know, placenta barrier there, but uh, it's fairly in in the uh, non-invasive procedure, and almost anyone can go through bleaching with no consequences other than. Some sensitivity. I've done it, and it, it does. Sometimes it will just start Make to a hurt a little bit, and pull them out. And sure. Let your teeth have a break. And we for have products a that can combat the sensitivity. Oh, you know, okay. you, in your trays, you can use bleaching one day and uh, desensitizing product the next day. And okay. Even Sensodyne is an over-the-counter product is a good desensitizer during a bleaching or during a you know intermittent sensitivity problem. Oh, wonderful! So there are yeah. other options out there then. And sure. Well, lastly, you mentioned something that I think most pe people get afraid to hear, root canal. <laughs> ah. what, what is a root canal and why would you know, someone ever get to the point to need that? Root canals are usually caused by either decay that's gotten deep within the tooth. Inside that each tooth you've got a nerve and blood vessel complex and we call that the root canal system. So if that gets invaded with decay or fracture, say you, you know, break a tooth or you know, any other kind of trauma may cause that nerve and, and blood vessel to die inside the tooth. Once that dies, the, the body tries to alleviate that dead tissue by creating an infection, which then becomes an abscess or a swollen face, um, pain. And then the, the treatment of that is what we call root canal therapy, where we go in and we remove the, the inner dead tissue, which is the old nerve and blood vessels, clean that canal out, disinfect it, pack it with a material that uh, creates a non-stagnant area that 
you can have your tooth and not have your nerve. Oh, okay, so you don't actually remove the tooth. And it's not, taking, no, you're just a small hole in the biting surface, like a, a drilling of a cavity, a little Ooh, deeper than that. Painful. <laughs> and then they go in, and it's really become quite a non uh, invasive procedure. It's not like the days uh, of, you know, sitting there with somebody filing in your head for an hour. It's, it's all it's done fast. with electric drills. It's usually a one appointment deal anymore, typically. Um, but uh, not uh, not usually a very painful experience, which is nice. But that being said, like you said, that's preventative care can most of the time, can yeah. mostly avoid. Yeah. And I guess that that would be my last question for people that are watching. Like I take care of my teeth and I do these. Have you found practicing for thirty years that sometimes the hereditary and there, genes, the genetics, sometimes there just is play a role? genetic gene for uh, uh, gum tissue breakdown. Okay. There is a genetic gene for uh, you know enamel that's not uh, maybe as strong as as what other people feel. So um, genes do play a factor. How so? Whatever the uh, uh, preventative far outweighs even if you've got weak enamel if you're great at brushing most of the time you can overcome the gene okay. um, maybe not so much in some of the periodontal genes but yeah. where you start losing bone but uh, for yeah. the most part you can for the most part preventative care, care yeah we would probably put a lot of dentists out of business if we could just clean our teeth once yes in a while. absolutely <laughs> see how easy that is just take care of your teeth brush twice a day floss right. do all the things don't drink too many sugary drinks so right. wonderful thank you so much dr peck for well, joining me for this first segment of joy yes. in our town thank you so much at home for watching if you have any questions or you'd like to know more information you can visit the website that's been at the bottom of the screen there's some also great information on there um, some educational things so please don't go anywhere we'll be right back after this short message I have played some characters you could call controlling, <laughs> but the truth is there's so much in life we can't control. Here's something we can, colorectal cancer. It's the second leading cancer killer in the US, but it is almost entirely preventable. Most colon cancers start as polyps and screening finds polyps so they can be removed before they turn into cancer. If you're over 50, get screened. Screening saves lives. It could really save your life. Hello and welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. Thank you so much for staying with us. If you just happen to be joining us, today we are with Dr. Mark Peck and he is a dentist and the owner of Dental Studio 101 here in Arizona. And uh, thank you so much for staying with us, Dr. You're welcome. Peck. You're welcome, my pleasure. Uh, wonderful to have you here. Great first segment on general dental health and concerns. Lots of wonderful information. I hope you were taking some notes. Um, but now we're going to speak about full mouth rehabilitation. And this is something that probably is to the other extreme if you don't take care of your mouth like we were just talking about. Yeah. So why would a person need and elect to do a full mouth rehabilitation? Well, there are a few reasons why people would elect to do that. And some of it has to do with trauma, uh, car accidents, and those that, that wreck a, a number of teeth. Most of the cases that we do, I'm sad to say, are uh, uh, could have been prevented with preventative measures uh, as you grow older. Mm -hmm. And most of what I would say we do full mouth reconstruction or rehabilitation are uh, the average age is you know in their 50s to 80s. So these are severely broken down. Sometimes it's just the normal wear and tear of teeth. Uh, uh, we wear teeth, you know, eating roughage and eating whatever we are, and sugar certainly breaks down some of the teeth. But uh, if you've got missing teeth, broken teeth, fractured teeth, ugly teeth, um, the full mouth reconstruction is a, a way to regain what you had 20, 30 years ago. Mm. So that's kind of what we had focused on uh, most of our practice. As soon as I got out of dental school in 1984, I went into a two-year uh, residency program where we did just full mouth reconstruction at the Face Institute. And that was an amazing wake up to me and, uh, dentistry because we learned you know tooth by tooth dentistry in, in dental school and this was one of the, the foremost mentors in the US and internationally teaching me how to evaluate a patient more comprehensively and in such then creating a comprehensive program for the patient that maybe has broken down teeth or jaw problems and that kind of a thing we've done everything from gunshot wounds to meth mouth to um, People that just want you know a smile makeover mm -hmm. and prettier teeth. Some people aren't blessed with white enamel, and even bleaching doesn't help them. Or they've got crooked teeth all over the place, spaces, and a, a reconstruction 
that uh, is in all porcelain can make them look you know, like they never dreamed they could have looked like before. One of my favorite things is the day that they come in for their most stressful appointment where we're going to be cutting 28 teeth maybe. And uh, we do that in about a five to six hour period. Take all those teeth down, get all the fillings out, go to bare tooth structure, and start rebuilding. And they leave that day with temporaries that look amazing. And we've seen so many people just break down right then and there. And it's like, I can't believe this is me. This is what I've always wanted. I should have done it years ago. All of that kind of thing. And most of those that, that are really appreciative are those that have had really non uh, dental problems that weren't really their fault. I mean, no. it's, it's crooked teeth and uh, accidents. And you know, you get in an accident, you lose your front six teeth, and you think, oh, I'll never look the same again. And maybe your face is disfigured. And with the surgeons that we work with and with the, the uh, hospital care and the dental care that we have today, reconstruction is a whole new avenue. And I'm, I've so enjoyed doing it since the porcelain, because my first 10 years of doing reconstructions, it was all gold. And wow. it was touted as a status symbol, although nobody really likes smiling and seeing all that gold oh, so in their the mouth. Oh, so the gold teeth. So that for, really, so the first 10 years of your practice, it was the gold teeth, but that was... Really, all I did was It wasn't gold. because they were in a music industry. It was because no, they needed... <laughs> they needed, you know, the reconstruction new and new teeth and the best thing. And still the standard of care is certainly a gold restoration will last you longer than pretty much anything else that I can put in your mouth. But the advent of porcelain replacing that gold and being able to have it functionally uh, and aesthetically uh, concrete is, is amazing, even to me today. You say porcelain, and whenever you think of porcelain, you think of something very fragile. So how have they made it? I mean, is, are people's teeth fragile? Are they breakable? How does that People's work? teeth, anything that I can put in your mouth, you can break. I mean, you can break your own teeth, and we see that even people just opening a bag or a candy bar can chip a tooth. Biting a fingernail, you can break. My dad your teeth. always yelled at me about that, like taking the tape and like <laughs> right? cut, trying to cut it with your teeth. Don't That's do an that. expensive break yeah. when it does happen, but it, it can happen to teeth, and it certainly can happen to glass. And porcelain is glass, although over the years it's become much, much stronger than it than it was when it first came out. Um, they use lucite crystalline structures, and they use lithium to silicate these different uh, glass uh, components that will make a tooth very strong. We're using a lot of uh, porcelains that we call are monolithic. It's a single solid tooth structure rather than building and adding you know, porcelain in a powder and liquid like we used to at the laboratory, and we still do today at the laboratory. But the uh, stronger materials are, are made of one solid piece of porcelain, and the, the crown is just ground out, and we can even do that crown in a day thing, which is the CEREC technology, which is uh, CAD CAM, where we can, and we did one, we did two this morning, where wow. you just take a man, picture <laughs> we take a picture of a tooth we put it on the computer we design a crown we mill it in the office cement it that day within about an hour appointment it's amazing technology wow and i mean this is something i feel like we could talk about forever it's fascinating yeah, I, and I don't know that much about it but how are the teeth put into the mouth they're they're fabricated on a form so we we cut a form out of the tooth that that is so we take all the decay and all of the, the fracturing away and what we've got left is a form of a tooth that hopefully is solid and, and large enough to uh -huh. hold a crown. And then the crown is just fabricated to fit over that, so it mimics the shape and, and contour and function of your natural tooth that used to be there. Interesting. So it just bonds or fuses to the tooth with the bonding material. And we have our oldest case, I'm happy to say, is 30 years old for a veneer case. I can tell you it's not the prettiest thing 30 years ago, and I would do it again. Um, but uh, we have many cases that are 25, 20, 15, you know, tons and tons of full mouth reconstruction and smile makeover cases over the years. So, and they're just, they're, and they're still there. They're, they're still there. Still now, you can break. Every tooth in my head is porcelain. Now, no. I did this summer run into a post in my garage and broke my front two teeth and Ooh. one over in the But see, the, did the that bottom. hurt like if it were your real teeth? Oh, it does, yeah. It does? Because <laughs> everything, everything falls apart just oh, like okay. your real teeth. So, Ooh, that sounds painful. Yeah, so it, it's not that it can't break. Um, we have a large CEO population in our practice, and those people, female and male, break everything you put in their head. They're just stressing, stressing, stressing on their teeth. Teeth grinding. And uh, the newer materials, I talked about the, the newer modern porcelains are a lifesaver for those individuals that are very rough on their teeth anyway. And before, I can tell you, each one of those CEOs, CEOs had very worn and fractured teeth, uh, natural teeth. 
That being said, though, this is also a very big health benefit to people because teeth are are, are, necess are necess right. necessity for us in life to eat, to speak, to do everything. So this completely if just... If you can keep your teeth, that's the best case scenario. Yes. Now, if you've lost a tooth, implants and, and uh, different denture materials are a lifesaver for you. Um, today, the advent of implants where you can just replace a missing tooth or every tooth in your head with implants wow. is amazing. Now, it's not inexpensive. But it is amazing, and we do a lot, a lot of charity work, and even full mouth reconstruction and charity, where we do pro bono cases, and uh, work with people that have a myriad of different problems, you know, missing and, and uh, uh, lost teeth, and bone grafting, and implants, and uh, denture technology has come a long way as well. Dentistry is very fast advancing. It is, and so if there are people out there, we just have a minute left here. Um, You're fine. You know, just briefly, what's the best thing to look for when looking for a doctor? Looking for a doctor, I would probably look for maybe experience level. Um, I would interview. I wouldn't take your first uh, opportunity to, you know, I would get a referral from a friend is probably one of the better. If you like your dentist and he's done well for you, he's probably going to do well for you again. I would not look in the yellow pages. Um, <laughs> you run a very high risk for that. But education and experience, um, and you want somebody that's compassionate, okay. somebody that can put themselves in the patient's view and say, if this were me, this is what I would do. Absolutely, and that's very, very good advice because you know, if you're if you're experiencing like that in your life and you're going to someone, you want to make sure that they they have a heart and they, they have understand your interest and in they mind. have your that's perfect your yeah. interest in mind. So that's probably a good bit of advice picking anyone that's ever going to work with you. But yes. thank you so much, Doctor. Well, you're Kay, welcome. For thank you for having today. me today. Wonderful information as always. We love joining you every week in your home here on Joy in Our Town, and we look forward to seeing you next week. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.